A very good afternoon to each one of you present here, taking out your time and being a part of the presentation. Uh, we are going to discuss about a ransomware and you know, what are the trends of the ransomware and how to protect against the latest threat. The agenda of the presentation, we would understand what are the anatomy of the ransomware attack. Also, we'll be talking about the latest ransomware, the Loki, the Zepto, and the Odin, and how they are carried out, the anatomy of the attacks. What makes this attack so successful? Some steps that we need to take to protect our organization from such type of threats, and, and then we'll end the presentation with understanding of how so forth, how we as a company can help you to tackle such type of attacks. So let us first understand the background of this ransomware attack. So basically ransomware is a form of a malware. So you know we, we all know it encrypts the information and the only way to retrieve or decrypt the information is either to is either by paying the ransom to the person who has encrypted it or the other option is format your drive on the own. So going into the history of the ransomware, so first 2013 was a year when CryptoLocker had first appeared and then it kept on, kept on emerging, the new variants kept on coming. You know, the current route, the existing route in the early days were in the form of fake AV, which you know, we open up our windows and we get a screen which talks about we on our node have a potential virus which and we need to download certain fake AV in order to clear that virus or the malware. Locky, Zepto, Odin being one of the newest flavor that are really creating a havoc in the industry today. Commonly, a ransomware demands for somewhere like 200 to 500 US dollars. That is approximately somewhere like you know 0.7 bitcoins. And what are the technology? You know, initially, it started with a batch file, then JavaScript file. They started attacking through a CHM files, and now the trend has been changed to an office document. So you open an office document with a macro enabled, you get compromised. So I have a poll, you know, a simple poll. I would like to know how many of you have come across such type of email. So what you see on the screen is one of the Australian Post email, wherein it talks about the uh, delivery of an item which was not delivered, wherein the receiver was ab absent. So this is a poll we have. Okay. One more type of an email which we basically get from a logistic provider talking about you know, the shipment order being undelivered. Okay. Again a post email which talks about a shipment which was not delivered because the address was incorrect. Okay, now this is a very common type of uh, phishing that I believe most of the people might have come across and trust me, this is one of the real example that many of us have received a phishing mail from an ICICI bank which talks about the online internet banking access and ask you to log into a site okay so we will move forward you know and then talking about the survey and talking about the threats that have been detected so if you see 33% of the threats are nothing but an exploits. An exploit is basically something because of the vulnerable systems, your operating systems, your explorers, your browsers, your flash players, when they are not patched regularly, you know, the hacker take use of such vulnerabilities to, you know, inject a potential virus into your systems. Generic malware, you know, constitutes only of 11% and ransomware is on 31%. So talking about specifically Indian business, 56.7% of the Indian business have been hit by ransomware. And guess what? I mean, it would be a bit tough to believe, but India is the third largest attack country in terms of ransomware in Asia and fifth in the world. 
okay the 60 percent of the indian business have re re received and also recognized phishing attacks and you know 99 percent of the ransomware attacks happen because of a through a spam mail or a phishing mail okay so we'll we'll move ahead and understand the common ransomware and you know we'll talk about the locky and uh, the friends so this is basically the common locky attack so if you see what happens is you receive an email it might contain a, it might be containing a document and the document will basically look completely scrambled something that you would not be able to read what it does it it advises you to enable the macro just because of a reason because the screen the data cannot be read read so once you click on enable macro what happens is the payload is downloaded and your file starts encrypting now locky you know locky it is named as locky because what locky does is it renames the file into a format such as a unique id followed by an identifier followed by an extension dot locky so you know just to give you an example if there is a file called as test dot jbg after the locky attack the test dot jbg file would be re renamed into something like fa3741aczba dot locky so that is basically what locky does the important point here to understand is locky also encrypts the files on the network share okay and other part is it also detects the shadow copy of the machine so just imagine the victim cannot even restore the files through windows restoration disk so that is the attack that what locky does so this is basically you know once the um, the attack is executed your wallpaper is changed into a screen which talks about the decryption of the file and talks about uh, the ransom you need to pay so if you see on the screen the format of the demand varies but the results would still be the same it asks you number one to register to bitcoin or wallet then you if you don't have a bitcoins you have to go on a website and purchase bitcoins once you purchase bitcoins you have to you send the bitcoins to the attacker and then you get a key to decrypt the data the zepto which is called as a new work kid on the blog so here you receive an email containing an attachment it would be a document it could be a zip file and here basically zepto works on a javascript library that is a js file is an extension for uh, the the uh, zepto virus so whenever there is a zepto attack again the zepto once attack you know the your file would change into something like an unique identifier followed by the file name followed by the extension of dot js which understands or which gives a clarity of your machine has been compromised by a zepto so if you see you have a sample file on the screen i click on that i click an option to open with i enable the macros moment that does it my completely disk get encrypted all my files are renamed into an extension of .js file and zepto will start to execute on the computer and then once it is done your again the wallpaper change to something that will give you an information about what is an attack what you need to do and how you need to pay again the format of the demand varies but results are again the same wherein you are supposed to pay the ransom and yes this is the new uh, kit on the blog is what we say Odin and even shit so initially it was locky then it was zepto now it is Odin. So so far, Odin basically is pushed out through an email with a vaguely grammatical English. You know, something wherein it will say that your order has been processed, you know, and then it will have certain macro or certain document file which you would be forced to click on it. The moment you click on it, the Odin again will start executing. The extension of the encrypted files would change to dot odin. So if you see on the screen, we have certain files which are encrypted in the document folder. So all the document type, the file types, uh, says that it is in an ODIN file and an extension is .odin. As soon as you get encrypted, your wallpaper, your desktop displays the same by page that is used by a traditional Locky or Zepto. 
So this is basically the screen that you get, which talks about an online wallet. It also talks about a method of creating a wallet to buy a Bitcoin, various recommended sites to buy Bitcoin. And it also gives you an option of, you know, downloading a specific um, a tool, which can give you a assurance that, yes, we are able to uh, decrypt your file. And then there are certain friends of this particular virus, CPD Logger, Tesla Crypt, Crypto Wall, Torrent Logger being one of them. And as it is said, it is a different a lipstick, but the pick remains the same. The execution method is different. End of the day, it ends on you paying the ransom. Okay. So this is something that you receive, you know, attachment saying that, you know, you have an encrypted message from JP Morgan and Chase.rar. Or you'd be getting a reassessment notice which talks about the you know the tax structure or the tax payers or the tax defaulters and would ask you to click on the more information redirecting you to a specific links. So moving ahead about the prevalence of the ransomware. So if you see the, the, the graph and, and you know this is something that has been registered or recorded you know they might be the numbers might be something different you know most of the people uh, you know if they if they get encrypted or if they get attacked they might not they may pay the ransomware but not publicize it or maybe not reporting it so these are the reported numbers so crypto wall torrent locker ctp locker telsa crypt so these are the countries where the prevalence is more okay now now let's understand the uh, the two main vectors of attack. So the first one is a spam, which is again more than 90% of an attack so far by ransomware is through spam or something like a social engineering. So what it happens, you know, basically it understands what you require. You know, maybe if you are going on the Google, you are searching specific websites, the, the cookies says all about it. You know, what are your interests? What are you planning to do? What are you searching for? Using those set of informations, the attacker creates a mail which might have an information about your interest and it might send it to you. Once you have a mail, you know, certain keywords might grab your attention. You know, something like an attachment would be a parcel delivery note. If you have ordered something from an online shop, it might contain an invoice as well. You know, the attachment contains an embedded micro. So when you open the attachment, you know, that executes the ransomware payload. So this is basically a common method that has been used by the ransomware uh, variants like Loki, Septo, Odin, Torrent Logger, CTP Logger. And then the other part of it is an exploit kits. So the, the important part here is you, I don't need to be an expert in order to have a ransomware attack. There are exploit kits. The, the exploit is available as a service, you know, exploit as a service, e -E -E -A -A -S is what it is called. So I can I can just use the exploit as a service. I can use their utility. I can I can use your vulnerabilities in your browsers or maybe a Windows to plan that exploit, and then I can get the money I want. So this is basically used by Crypto Vault, Tesla Crypt, Crypt Vault, and the Threat Panda. Some of the common variants that use the exploit kit in order to execute their attack. So not just giving you a brief of we are talking about enabling macros or you are talking about you know the, the attachment consisting of a, a malware or a document. So how does it work? So if you see on the screen, there is a, a, a common word document into which the data is completely scrambled and it forces you to enable editing, to enable editing of this particular document so that it is in a human readable format. Once you do it, you know, there is a payload that is downloaded and then your PC gets compromised. Again, one simple um, example of document malware through an email is you get an email from a specific logistic company talking about an invoice with an attachment into it, you know, and it, it ha has certain text which, which asks you to open the attachment. So once you do it, again, you get compromised. And then this is something which gives you a picture of, you know, maybe an engineering company sending a mail or maybe a visa application form or something like that. And it can be as simple as this one. You get a plain word document with only text into it. Now, then you you have an we imagine that you know there is something more on the screen. So we go on the options and we enable macro. Once we enable macro, the ransomware payload gets downloaded and it starts executing. 
left. So this is basically the techniques or the methods to document malware which has been trending today which the attackers use to inject their particular malware into the systems. So let us understand what goes into the background when we talk about this specific attacks. So let us you know typically break the typical web attack into five essential uh, phases or five essential layers entry point distribution exploit infection and execution so let us understand point per point or layer by layer what this particular point or layers does so this is the entry point so first part of an attack is an entry point so it is, you know, it can be either through an invisible drive by download, maybe through an hijack site or through an email which contains a malicious link. Most of the ransomware uses attachment with micros which has been generally found. Then comes the distribution. Once you are on the hijacked site or if you are on the malicious site, what happens next? is what the distribution is all about. So if you are on a hijack website that load malicious scripts, the first thing it does is an assessment. So it understands what system you have. It gives you an information about the browser. Are you using Internet Explorer? Are you using Mozilla? You are using Chrome or you are using Safari? It also gives you a basic information about the operating system, Windows, Mac or what. Then what it does is it redirects you into one of the thousands of malware distribution sites. This is called as a traffic distribution network. Next phase of a typical web attack is an exploit. Now this is for an exploit for a pack which is downloaded from the distribution server to attempt to run into a large number of pre-packaged exploits of known vulnerabilities. So you know once you on the malicious website there is a exploit that is the, the OS information, the browser information is assessed. Once that is done, there is something wherein it starts exploiting your computer or it starts exploiting your node. This can be typical, typically through you know a pre-packaged exploit against a known vulnerability into a system. Maybe you know it can be a plugin like Java, it can be a PDF reader, you know. So and then this, if you see on the screen, there is a dashboard, the black hole dashboard, which gives a complete information to a hacker or to a person who is injecting an exploit of what to what target or you know what is the track record or the progress of the exploit he has launched. So 5%, 10%, what are the systems it is launching the uh, implant. So complete information you get through it. Okay, and this is basically uh, one of the more uh, known uh, exploit the angular revenue so this is a very famous and it targets the flash processes basically so it gives an information of you know see 90,000 other targeted victims per day I mean 40 percent of the users being served as an exploit and has been compromised now once the vulnerability is exploited the machine is infected with a malicious pay payload payload so if you see desk this last clip being one of the most common followed by converter andro made up in uh, most uh, vulnerable uh, variant of uh, ransomware. And the last phase is an execution phase. So execution phase is nothing. It starts doing its business basically. You know, you can say now you are completely infected once it is executed. And it also gives you an option of selecting your own language so that you can understand and you can pay the ransom to the attacker. Okay. So this is what after execution is what with happens. So if you see on the screen the file there is a file which is created on the dashboard which talks about you know the information or the uh, do's and don'ts once you are encrypted so it says that your computer has been locked or been encrypted with 204 bit of um, RSA encryption and what are you supposed to do to decrypt the data right so you open you know a website go to a browser open a link use an ID pay one Bitcoin and then download the decrypt packet. Also it talks about there is you know you can decrypt one file for free to ensure that decryption is working and the best part here is they also have a chat support you know so in case if you're not able to understand you can connect to their chat members 
and get the information about decrypting your drive. One of the screen wherein it talks about you know Bitcoin. You know you you are redirected to one of the Bitcoin sites wherein you are supposed to uh, buy the Bitcoins, and then you get the key to recover your data. So payment through of a ransomware basically happens through bitcoins and the interactions are available on the Tor that is a, the onion router protocol which basically has been used by all of the ransomware attacks the best part you have to know is the ransom keeps on increasing the longer you take to pay you know because you know, and on the moment you pay the ransom they, encrypt, they provide you the encryption file so that you can decrypt whatever the files have been encrypted so it also gives you a a time so if you see on the screen you are getting something which talks about if you are not able to decrypt the files the cost of which is 500 US dollars in case if you don't do it in a specific time frame the file will increase two times and it will be 1000 US dollars you know that is what it does so here is what is on the screen which talks about your computer and files are encrypted and you get the Bitcoin payment address as well so what is needed? We 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 understood, you know, what are the five layers of you know the attack, the anatomy of the attack. We talk about the five layers. Now let us understand what is the defense you require at each and every layer. What is the protective technologies you require? So entry point. How do we prevent it? Number one, use URL filtering. You know, block unwanted and inappropriate sites. Make sure you also scan HTTPS scanning as well. So even if it is a secured website. Ensure that you scan it for a potential uh, malware. You scan it for potential viruses onto it. Use an anti-spam engine as well, which would really help you to get rid of a spam mail to some extent. Then, as a control productivity and bandwidth, use sandboxing solution, which can analyze your data and only allow those which are confirmed to be clean. Then comes the distribution part, wherein you can use a DNS uh, lookout or live lookups, which would uh, help you not to go to a phishing website and go to an original uh, website. For the exploit prevention, what is required is an application control. Only allow an application which is important for your organization, for the users. Make sure you patch your systems regularly. For the encryption, for the infection, you know, once once a malware gets into the endpoint, it is very important that your endpoints is up to date and protected. So for that, you require an endpoint antivirus. You require a host intrusion prevention system, which can, which can um, you know, compare the attack with the known signature database and it, it can block it. Use an anti-encryption as well. You know, ensure that your data is protected. Make sure that it would, it should not go outside the network. And execution that is something wherein you after the you know you stop the execution of a particular malware so for that you need to have the best of the best ATP that is advanced threat protection to identify the infected systems you need to back up your data regularly from the on-site as well as offsite users so in an whole in an whole you know summarizing the complete defenses the first thing is to have an advanced web malware scanning and it should be backed by a very powerful global threat labs which could give you a solution on the go. Okay. Let us understand now why basically the attacks are successful. You know what makes the attacks successful. The first one is a complex threat chain and the social engineering of course. So what does it does is you know it, it understands you know, your interest. It taps those interests and, and use those interests in targeting the attacks you know then persistence you know keeping keep attacking till the time you know the attacker or the victim does not reply back so even you know there are high chances of you getting infected there are high chances that you might get the same mail again and again till the time you do not click it you know and then this is a highly lucrative job, you know, it, it gives you a great deal of profit. You just have to spam n number of the users and just wait till the time anyone replies back. And why? The question comes is why and how the infection occurs. The first thing is an, an inadequate backup strategy, you know, basically when there are no real-time backups, there are no offline backups, there are no offsets backup. 
we get then updates and patches for OS for operating system and application are not implemented swiftly enough you know maybe we just wait for the proper uh, maybe a downtime or we just wait for some time when we we execute or we roll out the patches for the systems then most important part here is a lack of security training you know this is something wherein I believe you know all the employees in the organization must be made aware of understanding which documents may I open and from whom you know what is the procedure if I if the document look malicious what am I supposed to do then how do I recognize a phishing mail how do I come to know if a mail is a genuine mail or a phishing mail then you talk about the conflicting priorities that is security versus the productivity you know we know that this method is not secure but still our people want to make it work so to some extent we just compromise to the security though we know much about it okay now now let us understand what are the practical steps you know to protect against ransomware so what minimum is what you should do you know, as a minimum what you are supposed to do what we should be doing in order to block such type of attacks the first thing is to deploy a good antivirus protection blocking spam using sandboxes solution make sure that you know your user does not you do not allow risky file in, uh, extension javascript chm vbs script which basically used by such type of attacks use a uh, url filtering you know this would also block in case if your computer or if your node is trying to communicate with any of the command and control servers HTTPS filtering is of prime importance using host intrusion prevention can you know help you to reduce the attack to some extent client firewall activate it activate it and only allow a specific ports to open which are required for a general working purpose use application control ensuring the user does not go into any of the false application or does not use any of the application which are vulnerable to exploits and talking about best practices practices which I believe everyone of us should do it now okay the first thing is backup regularly you know Take the backup online, off-site as well. Keep a copy of a recent backup. Do not enable macro. You know, that is one of the important thing. Yeah. Microsoft deliberately had turned off the execution of macros by default many years ago as a security measures. You know, that is the reason whenever you have a macro, it asks you to enable it. By default, it is not enabled. You know, don't in doubt it is better to leave unsolicited attachment out till the time the employees does not come to administrator the administrator does not verify it till that time it is good for the employees to leave it rather than opening it don't give yourself more login power that you need so avoid logging as an administrator for a longer time than required and maybe we should avoid opening the document or anything other than a regular work activity while we have an admin rights Okay, and then patch early, patch often. So sooner you patch, the fewer open holes remain for the crooks to exploit. And configure your security product correctly. Ensure that your server are in the DMZ zone, your users are in the local zone, and ensure you have a tight access policy between the user access to the servers and the server access to the users. And apart from that, additional um, awareness and training is what is completely required. You know, let us let the user go through do's and don'ts of the mail, go them through a latest A to Z of the computer viruses, and segment and com complain network. You know, wherein you have a NAC solution in place, where you define only specific rules for the user to access specific data you know not all the users or not all the departments might require to access all the ports on the server or all the ports on the internet so ensure that as per the need and uh, need of the hour as per the requirement of the users you only allow specific websites specific domains to be allowed specific ports to be opened encrypt company data now Encryption would not actually stop the ransomware, but could prevent the damage caused by sensitive information getting into the wrong hands. Okay, so even if 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 you are allowing a USB text into your organization, you know, and if you encrypt the removable media, it ensures that even if that USB stick falls into a wrong hand, your data would not be leaked. 
and use analysis tool which will give you a complete infection which will give you a picture of a root cause why it has happened what is the open vulnerabilities into a system what has to be patched what backup has to be taken what are the websites your user are accessing what are the applications that are in demand of hours what the user do so use complete analytical utilities to have a understanding of the employees and the understanding of the data that flows into the network so moving now to how we can help you know we are talking about the history of the ransomware how it does how it is executed the anatomy of the attack the different step that we have that we should be taking the best practices and why it occurs now let us understand how sophos as a company can help so sophos as a company have of recently been introduced sophos intercept x which is a completely new approach to the endpoint security so first thing is we were talking about the exploits you know we were talking about the known vulnerability into the day to day operational applications that we use we cannot stop a user from using a browser but what we can do we can prevent or we can close the holes for the crooks to getting in so if you see if i talk about basically exploit there are only 22 exploits but the number of malware that is there is more than 100 millions okay so what we do in exploit prevention the first part of an intercept x is an exploit prevention which has an information about all the exploits so even for an unpatched system if there is anything that comes into the system using the basic exploit they still block it right away so whatever new whatever exploit the crooks try to you know use in order to inject the the vulnerability good can be blocked okay so it it is it is basically monitors the process for the use of various type of exploit buffer flow, flow being one of them code injection being one of them stack pivot being one of them and whenever such type of technique is used to exploit this has been blocked right away the other is a ransomware i mean the overall heart of the presentation is ransomware so it would not be it would not make justice if i don't talk anything about preventing ransomware as in whole so what we have is an anti ransomware utility along with it so what it does is number one is it monitors the file access so whenever there is a ransomware attack the first thing that happens it is the file encryption the the file starts encrypting the rapid encryption of the file takes place so what we do the moment we analyze that there is a rapid encryption of the file we cut down the process so if there is a suspicious file or changes which are detected the file the shadow folder the file copies the cache of the files are created second thing what it does is the process of this rapid file encryption is stopped so that you know no other files gets encrypted and then there is an investigation process that starts that is a root cause analysis which gives you a completely do's who is doing what because of who what why when and and how is what the information it gives you know that is and then the rollback is initiated let's say in the process starting from the files getting encrypted to the process wherein we cut down the process the amount of files that get encrypted are rolled back to the original format and the malicious files are removed and last is the forensic visibility now this would give you a complete root cause root cause analysis as i said this will give you who that is who was the attacker the files that were involved the processes that are involved into this the registry files the cnc server ips the user and also it gives you a flexibility of adding a note into it so that you prevent such type of attack happening in future so this is the root cause analysis so if you see on the screen it shows a p which indicates the process which basically the red dot indicates the process uh, the the root cause of the process so the moment i click on the p that is in the green uh, circle it will give me the name of the process it says that you know this is was trying to write 14 files i would get the name of all the 14 files then it was trying to write again some set of files for which i can get the details of the fi files that it was trying to touch 157 registry entries have been rewritten the moment i click on the r the blue circle onto it it will give me the list of the registry entries that it was trying to alter it also gives me the you know the ip addresses 
the, the addresses where the particular malware was trying to connect, which probably would be a command and control, that is a CNC um, IP addresses. So this is a complete root cause analysis of it. So, you know, summarizing it all together, the SOFOS intercept X, what we talk about is basically divided into three major portions. The first one being the exploit prevention, which 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 blocks the attack with the help of the techniques rather than you know having the each and every individual malware information about it. The second part of it we talked about the anti ransomware, wherein in case if your file gets encrypted, in case if there is an attack, we understand the behavior, we understand the fast encryption, we cut down the process, we take a, a copy, a cache copy of the files. We roll back the files to the original state and we provide you with a complete root code analysis. And then deployment, you know, the most important part is how do we deploy it? This particular intercept X of SOFOS can be deployed with any of your existing antivirus. Intercept X is all about a signature less behavior which does not follow the standard signature behavior database signature behaviors. So, you know, it can sit along with your Symantec, it can sit with the McAfee, it can sit with the Kaspersky, it can sit with any antivirus that you have. You know, so your, your traditional antivirus would be giving you a signature based protection. On top of it would be setting and SOFOS intercept X, which would give you a signature list behavior for the protection from the exploit and giving you a complete root code analysis. Second method, this intercept X can also deployed along with SOFOS endpoint data protection suite which has a uh, HIPS, which has device control, which has web and application control, which has an accidental data leak prevention and has a very powerful antivirus and anti-malware engines. Okay, so that's it from me. Ask me questions if you have any.